Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny, thankfully sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined from Orlando, Florida, probably even sunnier there, by Isaac Martinez. How are you doing, Isaac? Good, good. Thanks for having me, brother. Yeah, and Isaac is a self-made multimillionaire and leading expert in the world of sales webinar with over 15 years experience and more than 250 million in sales to his name. He grew up as one of six children and his rags to rich story is an inspiration to many. By, the mid, by his mid-30s, Isaac had achieved extraordinary success, having successfully exited three companies and becoming a board member of a venture capitalist fund that invests in early stage startups. And you are the founder and CEO of Narware, a tech company that specializes in data sales and marketing automation for webinars. And that's what we're going to talk about today is how do you how do you run successful webinars that either generate you income, generate you leads, or basically make it worth your while putting the investment into it? Because let's face it, we've all been we've all been down that route of getting really excited about let's do webinars, we gotta do webinars, and then we do them. Hardly anybody shows up, then hardly anybody wants to be contacted, and then we just throw our hands up in the air and go, Well, that didn't work. And then six months later we try again, do exactly the same thing. So, um, Isaac, what did you, when you first started webinar, looking at webinars and doing webinars, what was one of the first things that struck you about how everybody else is doing them? So when I first got into the business and utilizing webinars, it was about 15 years ago, and there wasn't a lot of uh, technology that there is today. And so the, the first shortcoming was the lack of integrations and communication between the webinar provider and a company CRM. Some of that stuff has been solved today, but I'm shocked just of the hundreds of people I speak to on a monthly basis uh, and the thousands I speak to online. And so many people today still don't even have the basic integrations that communicate data back and forth between their CRM um, and their webinar provider. So uh, kind of that's always step number one. The second kind of realization over the last 15 years of, of like this, an evolution of how you do webinars, because I always tell people, you know, there's two types of webinars. There's great webinars that are highly productive and profitable. And then there's everything else, right? Webinars that fail to meet your expectations, fail to meet your customers' expectations, fail to meet your expectations. And ultimately, they cost money. They become more science experiments than they are like a productive channel to uh, sell through week in, week out, day in and day out. I mean, we have some companies that are doing three webinars a day uh, in the same business unit, which is a bit extreme, but it, but it, uh, it works. The kind of the, the next thing I, I really have discovered along the way is it's been driven through data and understanding the data of sales webinars. And, and one of the key data points is is the amount of leakage that happens uh, when trying to get people in the webinar. And, and this is like the first and foremost pain point that most companies deal with is they go out and they advertise, they uh, generate a bunch of leads for a webinar. They, they take a Google ad or Facebook, they send you to a landing page and it says sign up for my webinar. Uh, and so they go get 100, 200, 300, 1,000 people to register, but they get so thoroughly disappointed when the actual webinar happens and then they have a 18 to mm -hmm. you know 30% of the people actually show up right and so like it's so underwhelming for them and, and it's so demotivating right off the, the get go cuz they're like oh i can't get anybody to show up their, their registration to show rate is like horrendous right yeah. and so what happened to all of those 70% plus people that didn't show. And so when you start to dive in the data, you quickly realize the majority of the people that actually attend your webinars aren't coming from your, uh, the directly from registration to attending the first webinar. They really come from your leads. They come from the, that list that you're building uh, weekend, day in, week out, month out. You're building that lead list from all your marketing, whether it's direct to webinars or eBooks to webinars, or I mean, there's a thousand different funnels you can drive to get somebody to uh, that webinar. But
but majority of them don't come from the direct to landing page registration. They come from your lead list from sending out emails and reminders. And, and so many companies, they don't do that. They don't even, they, they don't think that way. They just, quite frankly, you just don't know right. any better. And uh, so, so just let me ask you a quick question on that, uh, because I think we get so hung up on volume, right? Everything is volume. And therefore, like filling, you know, sending out loads of emails and all that and filling up the webinar registration, and um, we judge everything by numbers. But to your point, uh, it's not really about numbers at the end of the day, is it? It's about the right, uh, it's about finding the right people to come to your webinars and, and kind of that quality over quantity piece. Yeah, it, it's segmentation, segmentation, segmentation. I, I can't harp on segmentation enough. Uh, and you want to speak to them. And so like your audience, for example, how you communicate to somebody who has never attended your webinar uh, needs to be very, very different than somebody that's attended five times. Uh, and they're just the, kind of the repeat person. Mm -hmm. So that person who's attended the first time, they need to understand who you are. Uh, what's the value you're providing? What's the, the product, the features, the price points, all those, uh, you know, fun things as you're building trust in with your customer or your, your prospect. But somebody who already knows all of those things, they've seen you already, uh, so many times, you want to communicate to them differently. You probably, quite frankly, want to send them to a different webinar and use technology to kind of parse those people because for them, it's pro probably about price point. Uh, it's about, uh, you know, the features, you're just not getting them over the hump to, or, or have established enough trust. Uh, there's a few, you know, many things of why somebody won't buy, but the fact that they're reattending shows they have interest. Mm -hmm. uh, you just haven't kind of earned their business yet. And then the other part is, I mean, I guess uh, that because putting on webinars is so easy today, right? I mean, just from a te technological point of view. And you mentioned earlier, yeah, I mean, I, I don't understand why people haven't integrated because, I mean, our CRM has two APIs and then, you know, you've got Zapier and all these other things. I mean, there's no excuse for being able to uh, integrate these days. Um, but like I was saying is the technology makes it easy. And I think then a lot of people skip all the all the prep and doing what's needed to be done up front in order to make it successful. They just kind of go set the date, pick the topic, have the speakers, and then just start blasting. Yeah, uh, so many mistakes. You, you can lose people even before you begin, right? Half the battle is getting the right people and the appropriate amount that have the highest propensity to close to your webinar. But the other half is there's kind of three phases to the webinar. There's the first phase is the marketing effort, the people that drive them to get them to actually show up. Then they have the second phase, which is presenting. And uh, a presenter makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you. I mean, I've, I've done tens of thousands of webinars through my companies. Uh, and, and the amount of low energy, the lack of uh, preparation, not asking for the close, right? Not having a webinar too short, too long. You know, there's so many of those variables that, that affect the, the, the customers or the prospects buying decision. And then you have the third part phase of a webinar is where you go from presenting to selling. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is a, for a lot of companies, such an overwhelming event because uh, for most companies that are having success, they turn around and they get three, 400 people in a webinar because they're, they're, building it up they're doing it weekly or, or monthly or quarterly yep. but they only have three salespeople to actually call everybody and so time kills all deals and what do you do when you have 300 people that just attended your webinar uh but only three salespeople you're just not going to maximize that experience uh and, and you're going to lose people left and right and, and not have the experience you want as a company to achieve your goals you gave a great, great presentation but you're not selling anybody yeah and and what i always find often is uh, as you said i mean the, getting the right presenter, getting the right content, getting the right pacing and all that. I mean, I've attended webinars where I'm like really excited about the subject, but five minutes in, they're still reading the bios out of people. And you're just like, oh, I'm, I'm just gone at this stage. Or they just go through really boring PowerPoints. And to your point, then it all kind of trickles away at the end. There's no real call to action. There's no real selling. There's just like, well, thank you, everybody. And, uh, you know, we'll be in contact. Yeah, I've seen that uh, more than I care to think about. And so if you think of like, how do you engage uh, that prospect? And, and so data will tell you the average person that will attend your webinar, regardless of when they join, 
are going to join and only give you about 43 minutes, right? So you have, you can have a 90 minute webinar. Uh, you can have a 60 minute webinar, uh, whatever it is on average going to give you 43 minutes. Mm -hmm. and 50% of the people are going to join will attempt to join even when your webinar is over. But as you start customers at this day and age, they've done so much due diligence about who you are as a company, what you're having to offer. They've, They've done all those things, and that's what brought them to actually get them in your webinar. So when you're when you actually put your webinar on, you know, quit talking about yourself so much and start talking about the value you're going to provide to that customer, uh, and and then show them the value. But don't make the mistake that so many people make, where they you get over technical, you get too complicated. The webinar needs to be at the high level. Uh, uh, and not into the technical weeds, especially on a sales to many there, when you want to get it in the technical breakaway and have your one-on-ones, but don't do that in, in a group setting, you'll lose majority, uh, of your room. And then the call to action is so important. I can't emphasize that enough. If your webinar is, is 60 minutes, have at least two, possibly three call to actions, and they don't need to be hard sales. Uh, you know, after the call it, Break your webinar into thirds. So if you every 20 minutes kind of say, hey, if you see uh, what I'm showing it is of value and it's something you would like to speak more about, go ahead and type in your phone number in the chat and we'll have one of our, our uh, uh, client success reps reach out to you. Mm -hmm. Something as subtle as that and asking a customer to put in their information will go miles for you in your conversion rate because that customer converts at close to 10 times the rate of your behavior-based buyers, people that have attended multiple times. And, and so think about having that because some customers don't want us to be there the whole time, right? They've seen enough. They're ready to make a decision. They're, they're, don't bore them. Give them the out to say, I'm ready to get on the phone. How do I do that? Just type in your phone number. And then think of that as you have 20 minutes in, another 20 minutes in, and then at the very end, you have your kind of final close. And those can be subtle. They can be aggressive. They can, uh, I mean, depending on the product, the price point, the nature of it, there's a variety of strategies that work real well, but the call to action is everything, right? It's not thank you for coming. And, and, and one more thing to put there, make sure you acknowledge the person that's putting in their phone number. So if John puts in his phone number, say, John, I got your phone number. Uh, we'll have somebody reach out to you shortly. That makes a huge difference to one, let him know and acknowledge that he's he's uh, been seen. But two, there's a little bit of kind of that FOMO that gets created where other people are seeing pe there's there's people of interest and it kind of in your psyche will drive more people to do it as well. Yeah, no, and I, I love that because, yeah, uh, you're correct is uh, you don't know at what point somebody has gotten all the information they want and also. You want, you want to catch them while they're excited about what you're talking about. And so because maybe later, if you send me an email an hour later or the day later, I may have kind of just moved on in my head because, you know, we're all so distracted these days. So I love that point about really giving somebody the opportunity to engage when they are at peak interest. Yeah, the uh, making a purchase is such a, an emotional decision. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter whether you're buying a car buying a software, buying something for your kids for school, online, in person, every time somebody purchases, purchases something, it's generally an emotional decision. So when you are giving your webinar and you have your customers at the height of excitement, that's when you want to have be able to speak to them, right? Because that's when you have the highest chance of closing them. And so that's why when you actually put on a webinar and you do a, a call to action, um, you want to track those people differently, uh, create a spreadsheet. There's softwares you use, there's software we provide to where you track those people differently. And so the people that attend your webinar, you wanna prioritize who do you call first, right? We'll say as an example, you get a hundred people in a webinar. Well, who do you call? Uh, that's a very overwhelming kind of decision that, that, that most companies have. And, and quite frankly, most people just kind of start at the bottom and they start making phone calls. They pass out the list and everyone's treated equally. And you definitely don't because that will affect your conversion rates, right? Identify the people that responded to call to action. Very first people that you want to call and, and equal is important. Give them to your best salespeople right. because those people will close at a higher rate. And then you kind of from there, there's 
you know, the people that you know through data through their, that are buyers from buyer behavior. Because most companies don't know there's two types of buyers in your webinars. There's the ones that identify themselves, right? They're the easy ones, but most people don't even ask for them to identify themselves through call to actions and other uh, methods. Uh, and then you have buyers that are be buyers by behavior. Uh, and so what I mean by that is the average person doesn't make a purchasing decision from a single webinar. Mm -hmm. It's a webinar, think of it as a touch point. They're attending multiple webinars over time. And you can quickly through data discover what that is. So what's the behavior of, of, of the prospect or customer for purchase number one? And that behavior will change over time. So purchase number two, that behavior changes. Purchase number three, that behavior changes. But it will isolate purchase number one for the sake of this conversation. And depending on your price point, the average person needs to see about 2.3 webinars before or uh, call it 60, depending on your length of time, about 75% of your total webinar length over a multitude of webinars. Uh, and those people start to become entering the buy zone. And so they have a higher likelihood to purchase than somebody that's just attended the webinar for the first time and they've been there for uh, 20 minutes. So if you think of who do you call first, let's call the people that have responded to the call to action. Now let's identify the people that are in the buy zone because of behavior and engagement over time. And then let's call the people that have been in the webinar for kind of over 30 minutes. But now you start to have to ask as a company, what do you do for everyone else? Mm -hmm. And the, the smartest thing to do over there is don't call those people, remarket them, retarget right. them, let marketing work them into the funnel again to get them to attend. And, and because those are the people you want to get, a webinar is a funnel. We've got to keep pushing yep. people down the funnel to get them into kind of the buy zone. And uh, and underlining this again, as you uh, as you pointed out, like is is putting thought and preparation into it. So to your point, I mean, if it's two point three webinars, it takes, uh, uh, and those webinars need to have some theme, some connection. There needs to be some logical. Like, why would I go to more than two webinars if if the webinars are always kind of similar or the same? So you have to you have to uh, you have to have some thread, some themes, some something new, something to compel me to come back again, and again. Yeah, the, the the worst mistake people make, and I've made this the hard way myself over uh, the years, is your marketing is disconnected from your presentation. Yep. So you, if you turn around in your marketing, uh, I'll use say my company for example. So if I was saying, hey, come learn the ten secrets uh, to putting on a great sales webinar but when everyone shows up i'm turning around into the weeds talking about the you know five top kpis uh you need to identify to convert people to a sell the people that showed up for the specific topic are going to check out instantly because that's not why they're there for it. and so it's super important to connect your marketing message to the actual presentation and it's also important to rotate that message over time because mm -hmm. uh, some people will come back once or twice because they may not have saw the clothes. They may want to look at it again. They may want to see it again. But if you don't, if you're not constantly bringing a fresh webinar, you don't have to overhaul it, but sure. change the subject a little bit. The, the guts of it can be the same, but the subject and, and the kind of needs to change over time. And then the offer needs to change over time, right? Cause you want to be able to, the product can be the same, be the same, but have your price point change, have your BOGOs change, have uh, your discounts change because those things on the backside of your webinar is what creates urgency. It's what, you know, getting somebody to, to a peak high and, and getting them ready to purchase is one thing, but you also need to create urgency to, to why get somebody to buy today, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, otherwise people that I'll buy two weeks from now, I'll buy next month and guess you know, life happens. They, they don't buy two weeks from now. They don't buy a month from now, they're out of that kind of the buying mentality. And so you, you want to make sure you're creating enough urgency uh, to get somebody to take action kind of now. Mm -hmm. And then just on a, uh, on a, on a note on the presenter or presenters that you have on, on the, the, because let's face it, I mean, sometimes you could say, oh, well, you know, oh, John's a subject matter expert on this, so he should be on the webinar. But maybe John's not the most interesting. Maybe John, like, is very verbose. Maybe he's quite boring. Um, so you have to be kind of careful who you choose. 
because you want them to have the knowledge, but you also want them to have the engagement factor, if you like. Oh, I, I, you, you completely nailed that. That I mean, I, I can't emphasize how important a presenter is, and, and that is such a critical mistake, right? All too often, companies put the subject matter expert as the uh, webinar presenter, and 95 out of 100 times, that is the worst decision you're going to make, right? Because yeah. they, they, are, they just don't have the charisma, the, that it factor needed to connect with that customer. That they're going to, upon delivery of the product, they're perfect. But in the sales side and the marketing side, uh, they just aren't needed. And, and so, and it may not be the sales manager. So the people go and say, okay, here's the subject matter expert. Let's make them the webinar presenter. Bad decision most of the time. You know, well, who are we going to get next? Well, let's take, you know, let's, let's find the guy out of seniority. Let's go find the uh, a sales manager and yeah. he knows this stuff and he's in sales. Let's put him inside the, the, the presentation. And what I would argue to everybody based on my experience, what you want as a presenter is the person that is an effective communicator that is relatable uh, and is a great presenter of your product and and make him your man, regardless of where he is in the organization. If he's the newest guy who just entered the organization uh, a month ago and he is has the right characteristics of a great presenter put him in right because a, a webinar needs to be exciting and engaging uh you you need to have the right energy you don't want to have the person sitting there be like well today i'm going to show you all this value i'm going to bring and look at me and and but i mean gosh that i, I it's a mistake so commonly made yeah, and I th and I think the, the the last part of that is then give that person the time and opportunity to actually practice and 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 hone their skills, uh, if you like, rather than just say, "Oh, you're really cool. You're going to do it next week, and then you're going to do it the following week." But in between, we're not going to give you any opportunity to actually get better and better. Oh yeah, you you definitely want to one give a sales deck to themselves and and let them make it their own. And I understand in all industries that's not possible, right? Because sometimes there's compliance issues, there's the FTC issues. There, I mean, there's all those issues. But for the most part, let a a webinar deck become your own presenter's deck. But also understand as a presenter, he needs like a, a rule of thumb. I always give to people is. Give him a, a, a 45 minutes before a presentation to get his mind right, mm. get his energy right, get him focused, reviewing the presentation, and then also give him a cool down time, right? Post the webinar, uh, because after presenting, people get tired, right? They yeah. just gave a presentation to everything. And, and if you take that guy out of a webinar and you put him right into whatever his next duty is, guess what? He's not gonna, he's not gonna wanna present off of the, the, another webinar because he can't win. And equally as important, more important, compensate your presenter on the performance of your webinars. Oh. And, it, and if you don't compensate him versus a presenter that is compensated, you'll see a significant difference in his performance because he's invested to evolve the webinar to make it better and better and better. And, and so there's a people, a lot of people's uh, kind of professional outcomes are built and driven by compensation. Yep. Right. And, and a great salespeople are really driven by compensation. Mm -hmm. And, and the presenter should be no different. Uh, you know, you really, he is, he is a sell. He may not be on the phone mm -hmm. or taking the e-com orders, but don't undervalue that position and compensate him for, uh, give him a piece of the action. And I promise you, you'll see your performance of your webinars get better and better over time. Yeah, no, I love that piece of advice because let's face it, I mean, we've no problem investing in buying leads and all of that. And and if this is actually generating leads and performance and turning into business, then why aren't we compensating the person who's responsible for that or, or at least is playing a large part in that process um isaac this has been fantastic i have to say i've taken i've taken some notes myself here um all of isaac's information will be below this video but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about you and your company yeah so uh i've been in this webinar industry and space uh for about 15 years uh i Transitioned myself from traditional bricks and mortars with my former company to 100% selling through webinars, uh, going from a million dollars a year in sales to $50 million uh, a year in, in sales through, through webinars. So there's been quite an evolution. The technology uh, that I used, it was kind of my secret sauce. 
And so over the, the last few years, I've rebuilt that technology uh, and narware.com and uh, I've turned it into an enterprise product. So what our company and product does as a, uh, as a whole, we help companies drive uh, higher registrations, higher attendance, and help them go from presenting to selling and give them all the data points. So whether using pipeline as a CRM or any other major CRM out there, we serve all the data back into the company CRMs to help them uh, ultimately maximize their webinar experience, maximize the sales from their webinars. Uh, if anybody in your audience wants to continue the conversation, uh, they can go to biggerwebinars.com. I have a free 20 page ebook is kind of the best practices and 10 secrets of how to create a great webinar. Uh, more than happy to, to give that to everyone for free. Yeah, and listen, I would encourage people to go check it out. I guarantee you've invested time and energy in webinars that haven't converted in the past. So investing some time in learning how to do it properly is something I think uh, is well worth the investment. So I would uh, encourage you to go check out uh, Nowhere. And again, thank you, Isaac. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again very soon. Yeah.